Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's your boy Mike Sparacino, a.k.a. Shades, here alongside Brendan Mulroy, a.k.a. Mulgoon, a.k.a. The Big Goon, and we're back with episode number 20 of Backup Blue Shirts. And we're dedicating this episode, as we always do, to a ranger. Number 20 goes to... Unfortunately, Chris Kreider. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Way to start off. Drop the bomb. And also, more recent player people might know, Vinny Prospo. Legend. Yeah. And the, the cup, reason... Won the, won the Stanley Cup with uh, Tampa Bay in 04. And the reason I said, unfortunately, to Chris Kreider is because he has yet to score a freaking goal this season. That's the only reason. That yeah. really is. Yeah, he's... I feel like he's ha- he's definitely had the chances to score... I feel like I've never seen a guy skate as fast as Kreider and still not score as many goals. It's unbelievable. But anyway, we're going to get to that and along with other stuff. Yeah, and uh, on a good note, Brendan got his uh, pre-podcast piss in, so he's not going to have to <laughs> rush to the bathroom <laughs> once true. we and finish Shades recording. Also, Shades, since we were recording a little later, Shades has ha- not had the pre-podcast coffee and egg sandwich from Dunkin' Donuts. So Yeah, but... Uh, all right. He's got, got his uh, he's got his water and we're good. So And we also have the essential box of tissues here because I one of <laughs> us always somehow has a cold of some sort. And uh also I commandeered Brendan's notes here. Yeah, he stole my notes, so I took some notes today, so I figured listen, we had a lot to talk about. A lot to, there's a lot to talk about with this Rangers team, so I figured And let's start off with down. the first note. And you put Rangers two and I'll start. Which it was, and it's been zero uh, and four ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a hot start, Mike. But uh, for the power play, at least. Yeah. Well, listen, and, for, and, for the and you know, line, and the bread and butter line for the top line, it was definitely a hot start. And then, then they decided, Mike. Hey, uh, listen, Rangers. Why well, have a normal schedule when we could just give you a week off in between your, you know, second and third game, and then after the third game, we we'll have give four you another days four off, days off, and then you'll play three games in four days too on the road. So, whatever. Yeah, but you, listen, you guys have hard, fun with that. It's hard to definitely not get frustrated. One as a fan, just because you get that hot start and then you got to wait a week yeah. for the next game. That in itself was just like, oh my yeah, that god, was a- this is terrible. I have to actually watch baseball. I mean, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. But uh. So. But uh, I just I just want to before you go any further, I just want to put this out there. I texted a friend of mine. I said, Zabanajad is the butter to Panarin's bread. And he basically said, get the fuck out. (laughs) And now they have since been dubbed the bread and butter line. So I thought that was pretty funny. Maybe Maybe you're the reason, kid. Maybe somebody stole it from you. But hey, I mean, it's not stolen if you don't put it out there. That's that is true. So that's my own fault. That is very true, but yeah, so the break was definitely a killer, but we can't blame it solely on the break, unfortunately. It's you, not can bl- you can blame it on the schedule maker. <laughs> That's what we can blame it on. <laughs> well, we're not going to blame it solely on him, even though he definitely fucked that one up, but anyway. See. See you But uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about that line, though. While we're while we're talking about them, and while we're talking about them, we might as well, they're basically the power plays, top power play line, so we might as well just talk about that as well. And uh, yeah, Mike, so they started off hot. Uh, the first game against Winnipeg, obviously, you know what they did. And uh nice little comeback action, back and forth. And, uh, and then Ottawa game. And after the Ottawa game, everybody was like, God damn, it's a banner at sick, which he is. Eight points after two games, and four we goals, like, wow. four assists. All right, it's on on pace for a nice uh Nice freaking season, and, and he still is. Actually, and then the Edmonton game happened. But but no, but still, but they started off nice, and I think we got maybe a little bit overhyped because they were playing Ottawa, and everybody forgets just how terrible Ottawa is. I would agree. But uh, yeah, the break definitely didn't help that that streak that they had going on. But um, yeah, so they come back, they play Edmonton. Who keep keep in mind though, Edmonton is has been ridiculous. They actually lost last night to Winnipeg. I was watching it, but. Uh, they lost one nothing in that game, but outside of their top line, I mean the team is still pretty mediocre. Oh no, definitely. But listen, but that top line when they're getting and they I, get I, this going, is, this isn't just my opinion. If you're no, listening, no, this course. is top analysts' opinion. No, as well. definitely. I mean they're definitely a top heavy team, but it definitely helps yep. when you have the fucking best player in the world on your team. Literally. But anyway, that but that game, that game, I just feel like they. 
I don't know. They just like died. I feel like sometimes like the offense, especially the offense. I mean, the top, I just feel like the top, the top line was basically the reason why the Rangers were so good in that the first, first two games. The first two games. Yep. And once you saw a little slow down in their production, which is expected. Yep. Spanjad's not going to score four points every single game. Unless you're playing every game <laughs> manually in, in NHL. 90, unless you're playing in 90, like, unless you're playing in 19, like, 80-something and you're Wayne Gretzky. But, <laughs> no, I just feel like that, that right there was a prime example that the Rangers... Is de- they're definitely lacking the depth scoring right now for sure. Oh yeah, and which like you we said, all and, we all saw that coming into the season. Yeah, and and not a surprise. And this zero four span, the power play has basically just died out. Yes, it has. And and I think it's really simple as well. I think they're just like with the first with the success they had in the first two games. I had a lot to do with the tic tac toe passing. Yep. With with uh, Zibanejad and panarin and um and booch but and rangers fans as a collective said holy crap our power play can move the puck around yeah, and, listen, and shoot this is classic now but i think that they saw the success that they were getting that perfect pass and scoring yep. and i think they tried to like ride with it but they really need to stop like i think they actually just need to simplify and and classic it's classic nhl interview terms pucks on net pucks in <laughs> deep and pucks on net and two of my favorite hockey sayings listen they and they really do need to put pucks on net and yes and another guy i mean probably the best pucks on net guy in not only on the rangers but probably in the whole entire nhl might be truba it doesn't matter there could be like 80 guys in front of him and i'm pretty sure he would still somehow put on like an 88 mile per hour wrister from the point top oh, yeah. shelf like uh, every he's, he's sh- basically the opposite of Kevin Shattenkirk. Yeah, exactly, as you were saying AKA before. AKA Mr. Shinpads. Which I was dying before, but yeah, they basically, he's basically can put a puck on from any, any angle. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. It and it, and every time he shoots it, not only is it a hard wrist shot, it looks like it's going to go in. Yeah. It's always on net. So, yeah. Now, they, do, do you feel like other teams have scouted the Rangers power play and cut off a couple of the passing lanes, which is a, one of the reasons why the power well, listen, play I has think right died now, down a little bit. I, I think so, but I also think that we'll we'll get to the Rangers' defense in a second, but I, I just feel like story. that the Rangers kind of do choke the puck up under pressure a lot, Yes, offensive and defensive zone, so I feel like, yeah, I think teams are getting overly aggressive. And I don't know. It's it's interesting. Like I, I don't know if a lot of fans feel this way. I mean, I know a lot of fans are like kind of on Kreider for especially for the way that he skates that he doesn't have more production in the lineup but one yeah. spot I think a lot of people do say they like him on is the power play and I understand having him on the power play having him in front of the net and stuff but for me personally like, I I think they should tr- I think they should just try it out I think they should not put him on the power play and not because he's playing bad I just think they should really change it up like I think when you have somebody like Panarin in the lineup and you have guys like Truba and Zabanajad Kreider's not Pavelski, dude. He's not tipping every single shot from the point. He's a big body, but you can put anybody in front of the net to be a big body. So I feel like they should consider like moving Panarin off the wing and maybe into instead, that, it, into the it, center spot. Well, not into the center spot completely, but doing like what the Capitals do in a way. And even though Oshie's not necessarily taking the face offs, he's staying in that middle position. And we saw last game with Faust getting that puck over to Panarin. And to me, I was like, that, like, dude, they should just try that. Like, what's, like, the power play is doing nothing right now. He might as well try something different. I just feel like they could, they would move the puck around better if they had somebody like Kako on the wing, who, even though he hasn't been producing as much, I just feel like his passing is just there. And he looks like the type of person where, like, he's very good at, like, creating that space for himself to make that nice pass where he'll fake and do a lot of, like, little moves with his skates, with the skating to really open up the passing lane especially. But I- I'm interested. To, I think that with the, with the guys that they have out there, there's no reason that the power play should be struggling. You have you have three guys that are more than capable of taking an absolute cannon Truba, Zabanaja, and Panarin. Oh, yeah. You got to get the puck to them, and they got to start shooting it, dude. That's the only way you're going to score. 
doesn't matter how good the power play looks. Like if you at the end of the day, if you're not scoring on it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, if you're not going to shoot, this is to vintage begin with. Rangers power play that we're seeing. Basically, this is. I remember when I was younger, going to the games, dude. Like Pete, the crowd would literally be like crying, like and going insane, like shoot the fucking puck, shoot it. That's all you used to hear when they were on the power play. Like, you, you know, you think the Rangers can uh, decline a power play once in a <laughs> Seriously, while? Seriously, <laughs> dude. No, but I really think it's like a simple fix. And and I agree, like, there has been a lot of nice breakdowns by Valakhead and, and even guys that write articles and stuff. I love that. And I think they, they – and I, I get it. Like, like I said, I think you need somebody in front of the net, but I just feel like – you can put somebody else there. Like, I would love to... Do you get where I'm coming That's from, That's the part I agree with you on the big body in front part. No. Jeez, I got my tongue twisted. That's the part I agree with you about having a big body in front of the net. A big body in front of the net is a big body in front of the net. What I disagree with you about is Kreider has chemistry with both of those those guys, Zibanejad and Panarin, and he's very good at screening the goalie, sure. especially when they're trying... True. To pick the top corner on the left. But the only thing I like, the only thing that I will say is that I just feel like he doesn't, like a guy that in tight like that, he's he's not a finisher, dude. Like he's not a guy that's going to bury that puck. Like he'll, he'll, I mean, we've seen it. I, it was in the Edmonton game. Prime example, Kreider gets the puck in the slot. Nobody on him. Shoots it right shoots into the it. goalie's chest. No, he actually hit the post on the shot. Oh, he did? Yeah, he did. He actually didn't shoot into the goalie's chest, surprisingly. Sorry, I missed the game. No, no, so I'm but, sorry. but... No, he, but... He, did, he has shot into the point. goalie's chest a My lot point is, then. listen, I think that when you have a guy in tight like that, and I always use the Capitals in his example because, listen, they their power play is still disgusting. Just go to the Rangers-Washington game that they lost. They scored how many goals on the power play? At least two. I know that. And listen, granted, they have a whole other Amnol and Ovechkin on the wing, but the amount of damage that TJ Oshie does from that spot, and you're going to tell me Panarin's not a more lethal shooter than than uh, than he is? I don't know. I, I just feel like it would be an interesting... I would be interested in them trying it. That's all. That's all. I don't know. After, I, after the goal he scored against Vancouver, I can see why you would want them to try it. Just because he sense. has such a he has such a sick release, like in tight like that. Yep. Like, dude, like you don't even need anybody in front of the net, bro. When he sh- when the pass is coming and he's just whipping the puck hundred miles per hour, top corner, goalie can't even slide over that fast, dude. Now, just to back <clears> up a quick second, I mentioned the Vancouver game, but I'm gonna take the one and only positive that came from the Edmonton game. The first career NHL goal for our number two overall pick, Capo Caco. Oh, in the Edmonton game, you said. Yeah. You mean? Yeah, I think you said Vancouver by accident. Oh, and he, <clears throat> all right. Even if I didn't, who cares? <laughs> no, Cap- but that, Capo Caco scored his first NHL that goal, very, and it was filthy from the pass to the finish. That is true. A backhand pass, passed slash through two defensemen by Ryan Strom to Capo Caco, and Courtesy then backhand forehand. How you doing? First NHL goal. Listen, that was just a beautiful. Play that was all a fi- that was actually a really nice goal. You're right. And I almost forgot it happened. I've been so frustrated about the 0 and 4. Hmm. No, but and you mean 2 and 4? 2 and 4. Sorry, 0 and 4 since the first two wins. That's what I meant to say. Get it right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Strom has actually been really nice at, with the passing. At least he was in the first couple games. But uh, yeah, that was it. That was and listen, we did not play a bad a bad game by all means in Edmonton. They had lucky they had a couple lucky bounces. Hank played out of his mind in my personal opinion in that game. But Hank didn't play against the Devils either, which that was of course we got to lose to them. But uh if I you're gonna really, I dude, if you're gonna t- lose and, you know, have a and have a losing season, just do it from the beginning. Don't give the fans <laughs> false hope. Well, listen, if, I, if you're gonna suck, you're just please suck. If you're gonna be good, be good. <laughs> unless you know you're the St. Louis Blues from last year, then yeah. Well, it, it's only a couple games in, so like you don't want to go into full panic mode. But there's no. uh, there's some there's some you don't want to go into that panic s- mode, but you want to still critique things that deserve to be critiqued. Yeah, and I think we can start with and one of them. That's Rangers defense. Let's let's get uh, back to the list. Let's get back not, to not the list. Chris Jericho's list, but uh, but, but be uh, honest. Let's start. Let's, let's have a discussion about the defense here because it's, let's it's based confused. off your note, which says Rangers defense, and then a right arrow pointing in front of net. Go. 
Well, I think that's their <laughs> biggest. I mean, to me, that's for the last couple, last two seasons at least. The oh, defense yeah. in front of the net is just terrible. You have way too many pucks just sitting there for long periods of yeah, time. Yeah, and this goes back to actually, the Winnipeg game this season, all, yeah, too, exactly. which is the home well, opener. Which also cost them the Edmonton game as well. Yeah. And it was a 3-2 game. I think they made it 4-2 or something like that with the puck that was just sitting in between Hank's legs. And they just let the guy in Winnipeg literally just go right up. And uh, it was Cassian, I think. They just let him go right in and just push the puck through. And they're just so, like... Sometimes the awareness in the defensive zone, man, is just like it's brutal. And and I mean, besides the front of net stuff, you know, not getting guys and letting them take great opportunities. I mean, just think off. Of one, I could think off of a couple of examples off the top of my head where they just let a guy walk right into the slot and take a wrist shot. Like, listen, Hank's good, but and no, you can no goalie stopping. No that. goalie stopping Brock Besser taking a wrist shot from from the, from the slot. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> just not happening, dude. No. Unless you come out and cut the ankle off, but you know he's just a sniper, dude. Like, there's nothing you could do about certain goals. I feel like they've given up, and yeah, no, you, and, there I mean, is nothing. And the except biggest thing, play better defense. And the biggest thing, and this is, there's no doubt that we were just talking about this before that. There's no doubt that teams are scouting the Rangers and <laughs> in, in typical uh, NHL uh, interview fashion, pucks in deep. But pucks no, teams that. literally do get pucks in deep against the Rangers, and they know, listen, we seen what Winnipeg did to them in the first game, dude. They were all over them on the forecheck. And not every team's as good as Winnipeg is at forechecking because they actually are one of the best probably in the NHL. But that's got to be a scouting report for all the teams. You know, Their defensemen are going to turn that puck over in the defensive zone, and how many times have we seen it? Oh, too I mean, many. listen, that happened how many times? In just the last game alone in Vancouver, they turned the puck over a couple of times, and even in the uh, in the Jersey game, Panarin tried to get the puck out, and his stick broke. That was unfortunate luck, but still. Yeah, seriously. Unfortunate yeah, but, uh, is an understatement on that particular that's, that's goal. That's definitely been their biggest, I would probably say, the worst thing about the Rangers' yeah. defense. All right. Continue. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that. I'm, le- I'm leaving that in there. <laughs> no, but I, I, I'm i just saying that. Like I, I think that's probably been the Rangers. That was my dad. Most, Im- most important thing to really call out about the Rangers' defense this first couple games is that I think they really got to clean, clean up the breakout of the zone because it's costing them a lot of games. Yep. What are your thoughts on? It? I mean, I, that's I mean, that's I how liter- that's what I, I've evaluated about the Rangers I've, defense. I've literally had this one turnover in my head the last five minutes. It was honestly the schedule has been so fucked up to this point. I don't even remember who we were playing, but Fox skated the puck out of the zone beautifully, and I just remember he should keep going with it. And then he makes a boneheaded pass. I forget who was there, but just makes a boneheaded pass. The team, honest, that might have been Jay Beagle's goal. Oh, that was yesterday then. Yeah, it might have. Well, yeah, well, no, but well, actually, that well, the Jay Beagle goal was with Panarin and actually in Zibanejad. All right, any, yeah, but, Panarin, anyway, I forget who we were playing, but he just makes a boneheaded pass. The other team comes right in on an odd man rush, puts the pucks in the back of the net. I'm like, why did he pass that? Yeah. So some of it is structural, and other time, I mean, other times, most of it this season, at least from the games I've watched, in my opinion, it's been just boneheaded decisions yeah. where. Either listen this passes is, we shouldn't make, or just we hold on to the puck too long. I think they. I think you have to expect this though from like the young defensive core, basically besides Mark Stahl. But well, I mean, we have Libor Hayek and Adam Fox, who are def- rookie, legitimate rookie defensemen, and yeah. Mark Stahl, who is really showing his age. Yeah, to, yeah, but to I, be nice. Yeah, but uh, no, but that's definitely. That's definitely the biggest thing with the defense, too. There's a lot of inconsistencies, even with Brady Shea. I oh, mean, yeah, no, he's example. been very he inconsistent this season. And listen, hey, listen, and Quinn has absolutely no... He doesn't give a shit if you're a veteran or not, bro. He'll put your ass on the bench if you're not playing good. So. Be- hey, dude, he benched Shattenkirk and Shea last year. Dude, so, I mean, Shea, Shea basically barely played yesterday, bro. They were rolling out the... And that happened to them the last two games. They went down to five defensemen. Yeah, the D'Angelo game that was play. D'Angelo, so... Well, I mean, he played, but, but I mean, he, and was, he was very yeah. limited after the first and, period. And I think it was the same thing. He was turning the puck over too much, if, I'm, if I don't recall properly. Okay. But I'm pretty sure that's what it was, but... Now, uh, 
Before I get into critiquing Quinn's decisions on certain things, I just have to point out that we've been recording for 20 minutes now, and we did not bring up the Vlad Nemesnikov trade, which yes. happened somewhere yes. in that you know, horrible break of a schedule. We were talking about the cackle goal, which for some reason reminded me of the Vlad Nemesnikov trade, and which also reminds happened. me of a guy that you just brought up, too, Shattenkirk. Who's been on an absolute? Well, he was on an absolute rampage with Tampa to start the season off. He had three goals through the first five games of the season, I believe. He was on a rampage. It felt like he didn't have three goals over the course of two years with the Rangers. <laughs> and Nemeskov goes to Ottawa and has no big deal: two goals and an assist first game. Don't know because how he's been of doing. course, don't know how he's been doing ever since then. To be honest, but I just thought that was hilarious that. Because of course, and he was actually he was my actually pretty he in. was actually pretty excited. It sounded like to be leaving the Rangers. So I guess I, he figured look, he was going to get more time playing time. So d- recap of the trade, real quick. We traded him for a guy in the minors who I know absolutely nothing about, and a fourth rounder. So yeah, that just goes to show you how bad his trade value was. But at the same time, you just said he was ha- he was probably happy to be out of New York. The entire time he was with the Rangers. People were saying he should be a top six forward. His play did not warrant him being in the top six to begin with. His team didn't... I mean, his play didn't warrant him sniffing the top six. Yeah. That's how bad he was I mean, playing. Listen, I, I'm pretty sure Nemeskov's contract's done at the end of the year anyway, isn't it? Or does he have yes, another? Yes, No, end of the year. So, I mean, listen, I, I, don't, I guess... I mean, we weren't going to resign yeah, him exactly. to begin with. So, listen, so. you might as well just get him, you know, yeah. a fourth-round pick. Hey, you never know. So, I don't mind the trade at all. Rangers don't really have... I mean, at least... From our vantage point, I mean, you can't expect them to make the playoffs. And even if they did, he's not really a guy you look for to really no. bring that your team over the hump of making the playoffs. So if you want to trade him for a fourth rounder, knowing that to me shows that they knew they were not going to re-sign him. And apparently he'd been on the market for a long time. So I don't mind the move. Like, it doesn't really affect the Rangers' depth that much, to be honest. So I like I said, I don't mind it, but I'm glad we had brought that you remember to bring it up, though. But I've been waiting to bring it up for like ten minutes. I just wanted to, it just it didn't feel right ten minutes ago. You know no, what I mean? Exactly. So, sometimes things just don't feel right. Exactly. Timing is everything. Absolutely. But uh, now you did bring this up before about Henrik Lundqvist. When I'm just gonna say this, as much of an egg as the Rangers laid in the first half of that Vancouver <laughs> game, which uh, I wasn't home. As soon as I turned the TV on with about seven, eight minutes to go in the second period, the Rangers started playing phenomenal. It was a complete 180 from everyone, from what everyone was saying. And I'm just like, you guys can say all you want. As soon as I turned the TV on, they started playing great, which is a fact. Well, well, listen, the Rangers, the whole problem and with the... Lundqvist f- kept us in that game. Listen, and... You could smash Lundqvist's performance all you want, really. 40, Yesterday's game, 40 saves. No, guy had 40 saves on 43 shots. Could you really ask anything more? One of the goals they gave up was shorthanded. Panarin, Sabanajet went to Panarin in front of the net, misfired. Nobody was back. 2-1-1 on a shorthanded. That sums up the Rangers' power play right now. It's that bad. We, I, dude, I remember a couple years ago, we gave up a 2-1-0. And and listen on the power play that was and not for nothing that was a that was actually a really nice shot by Beagle Zabanjad actually got back lifted the stick yeah it was like some NHL like it was some Chell twenty where like <laughs> somehow you were there to make the play but the guy scores anyway it was one of those yeah Lundqvist even admitted though he made a bad yeah he read. he made a bad read exactly he thought he was going right whatever but listen Happens. he shouldn't be facing two on one in a goddamn shorthand yeah serious so I'm gonna blame the team on that one and. And the other one, too, with Smith, I mean, like, dude, you got to get that puck out. Like, he doesn't get the puck out, turns it over, and then Brock Besser has, a, has a, a shot in the slot. I don't blame that one on Lundqvist, to be honest. And then and then he backs it up, and, and he, he basically keeps the team in the game, which was what he did against Edmonton as well. He kept the Rangers in that game, dude. They had absolutely no business being in that game. He had about eight to nine saves that were just, like, ridiculous, as he did yesterday as well, so... And his, I mean, listen, his numbers, his goals against average is definitely poor right now, but I don't consider that even a reflection of the way he's played. No, to goal, be goals against average is a very tricky stat. Because, I mean, you got... On paper. He's given up at least three goals in all the all the games he's played so far, and they'd, if you look at the stats and the goals against, you'd be like, wow, he's terrible, but he really hasn't been... No. You would know that if you watch the games, but... Yep. 
No, I some somebody tweeted something, and one of my responses was, "Hank haters don't watch the games." Yeah, which I mean, that got a couple likes. I was happy, but uh, you said in the game earlier, and those specific three words stuck out because you want to know who's coming into the next game. Greg the Tank McKeg. Oh yeah, baby. Greg McKeg. And listen, like I wrote in the notes, which is hilarious, in the lineup, and then oh, yeah. what did I his, say? his exact note, Brendan's exact note. Greg McKeg enters the lineup and then leaves. Where's, <laughs> where's he going? Is he going to fucking Subway? Well, listen, dude, I don't is know. He, is he picking he me up? Is one he picking game us and then up? Quinn was up? like, listen, apparently that wasn't good enough for me. I got to put fucking Haley in the lineup, which is fine. Whatever, whatever. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even mad about that. But listen, at this point, if you want, you want to want to just transition talking about Quinn at this point because I feel like it all ties together. Yes, I was. Let's at, just was talk just about, about the, bring that Let's up. talk about the lineup for a second. So we know that there's been some changes upcoming for this Arizona game. We got Haley's out again. Greg McKegg's in. We got Greg, Foss, Greg the Tank. McKegg. Greg the Tank. The Tank is in. You know we what? Got, we're just gonna, all, we're just gonna call him the Tank from the, we from, have, the rest, from now on. And it's hilarious because our fourth line has Brendan Smith and it's the winger, and it's it's to sum up how he is not playing awful. And that's that's the funny thing is apparently Brendan Smith is a good winger. Apparently. He is Nobody not playing ever awful. This, minus that turnover he had yesterday. It was awful. Yeah. But he hasn't been bad. And, and the most hilarious... He draws penalties, dude, too, he man. He actually does draw a lot like of penalties. That's, that's a very good positive. That actually is a really funny thing that he does he, well. Uh, he legitimately draws a lot he of does. penalties. He does. And I think just he, to give I remember you how reading much... a stat. I think he led the NHL in yeah. penalties yeah, for... Yeah, Carpenter out in his article. Per 60 or yeah. something. And... And the thing is about him is, as much as you want to just like you see his name and it just pisses you off because it's Brendan Smith, but you're just like, he actually has been good. So he's not playing defense. So he, I don't consider him a liability. Although out there. I'm pretty sure they still put him on for the penalty kill. Sometime. Okay, well, I, at least one penalty kill unit. I don't, I don't mind him in the lineup. And to give you a little example, honestly, he's this year so far he's been a lot better than to give to give you some two. numbers so. bes- besides. I think it was in the Jersey game and the Edmonton game. In between that span, and maybe the Wa- or maybe it was after the Washington game and the Devils game, that Smith was actually outscoring Panarin, Panarin and Zibanejad in that frame of games. Yeah, which so, was which, honestly, it was a pretty funny tweet. Not uh, gonna yeah, lie, so it was. I mean, pretty funny tweet. And listen, we can't. We can't expect those guys to be scoring putting Four points up five a game points a game. For 80 so games. They, they're allowed to slump as far as I'm concerned. They made some, and they still, Panarin already has four goals still. Panarin, I mean, uh, excuse me, Sabanajet's still getting his points. So I, I'm not concerned about them. But uh, I, would ju- I just want to bring up that Ryan Strom led all New York Rangers players in ice time through two periods against Vancouver. And even before the game, which I I told you I missed the first half of it, I was infuriated with the lineup that Quinn put out when I actually saw it. And then watching the game and then knowing how the season's gone so far, I was getting even more aggravated because what is Strom doing to deserve all this ice time that Buchnevich and Kreider are not? He's, he's not doing anything more than them. I mean, Kreider was actually playing... Halfway yeah, well, decent the other day, even though he didn't score. Well, Kreider was promoted to the top line, right? Yeah, Buchnevich. Yeah, and again, Buchnevich on the fourth line down. still makes no fucking sense. I just think that they he almost went into like a panic mode, and I think he felt I did I for Quinn. I think it's like for all for him. I mean, I would love to hear like an inside expert's opinion on what he thinks about Quinn, but I feel like with Quinn, it's it's. It's not even about that like skill. It's about like the drive and the and the level of effort that the guy gives. And I feel like sometimes yep. he feels like Buchnevich just does doesn't give enough effort. But at the same gonna, at the same time though, if that's like asking Marion Gabbers to throw a body check, dude. Like <laughs> that's not happening. And block shots. Not happening. You know, happening. like there's certain things that I think and maybe it shows, hey, maybe it shows us that Buchnevich isn't a two way guy. Maybe he's just a strictly he's a fucking forward. And listen, that that's fine. I think we have guys you that get, can pick up that you, slack for the back check. I mean, if you put them on Panarin and Zabanajad's line, those two are pretty damn good defensively. Well, what was I was going to say? 
So for me, I, I feel like you can't bury him because he's not doing like certain things. You know, like if I just feel like you can't expect those things out of everybody, dude. Like some guys just that's just not their style, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, like I just feel like sometimes is he gets a little bit too caught up in that. Like everybody has to be like a grinder type of mentality. And that's why I think we're seeing the promotion of Foss, not for nothing. who has been playing unbelievable, but I think anybody, he's not a first, he's line not guy. a first line guy, but Hey, listen, maybe there's, maybe there's some sort of connection with Panarin that we, nobody knew about. And I guess maybe we'll see tomorrow. Maybe they'll have some great passing because it certainly looks like there might be, but so, uh, what you're saying is yes, for Foss is going to score a hat trick next game. Hey, listen, I don't know, but we'll find out. Maybe the Rangers power play will actually score. I no, mean, but I, hey, mean, just, I mean, we are playing against Phil the thrill. You know, we might have to true. thrill the crowd a little bit with the power play. Goal. I just don't know. It's just the lineup to me. It's almost like it reminds me of like a classic AV situation. This is what it reminds me Kinda. of. Where you, where you see the lineup, and yeah, you're just Leas, like, Leas I don't is being buried on the fourth line between you got, Strom and yeah. either Haley or McKeg. Dude, you got Kako has been playing with Strom, who is not showcasing Kako's skill set by any means. Well, listen, outside of the Edmonton goal. Yeah, I mean, Kreider is off to a very slow start. I don't think. I, I mean. I don't throw Strom completely under the bus, but I understand what you're saying. How- Howden's been... Howden. I feel like he's yeah, been... Yeah, he's been there. Just there. But I, listen, I feel like in all this, and it goes back to with Quinn, I think he likes the drive of certain guys, and I think that's what keeps guys like Howden out there more. I think that he just think, yeah. he feels like he goes after it. And I just feel like... Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like the the lineup, like they're they're worrying too much about it right now, and I feel like you can't like we've seen the damage that Panarin, Zabanjad, and Buchnevich can do together. I don't think that just because they've played a bad couple of games that you should just just like yeah, dude, Crosby and Malkin lineup. have yeah. bad games all the time, bro. Like you can't you can't it happens. Just, yeah, exactly. It happens. It's just it's just it's what's fucking pro sports. You're gonna have a bad and game. Listen, once not in a for while. nothing. You played good. You played good teams, dude. Yeah. Like Vancouver, whatever Vancouver's a oh, Vancouver, but they've been fucking hot, dude. Yeah. Like they lost, they just they lost the Devils the night before. That they were on a four game win streak. They were a hot team. Edmonton was hot. Washington's good. Like they lost three. T- they lost. They could have had the Devils game. The Devils have been pretty bad to start the season, but yeah, yeah. But whatever, they didn't win it. But that was you know. Aside from that, they played pretty good teams besides Ottawa. Winnipeg's not a bad team either. They beat well. Winnipeg. I mean, they're good they beat, offensively. Yeah. Well. Well. Exactly. Yeah. But they beat Edmonton last night. Just saying. They. It's. I just feel like they've panicked a little bit too early, and I think yeah. that they're making like. He's making almost like silly lineup decisions where it's like now you're throwing the whole lineup off. Now, now you're throwing that top yep. line, who's arguably been our best line. You're throwing it off. I don't think it's going to be bad with Fost on it. But now, what are you going to do with Buchnevich? Now, what are you going to put him on the third line, second line, or is he going to? He's probably going to play with Crowder, I imagine. We'll see about that. I'm curious. I mean, and and another thing too, I I had wrote it down in the notes, and I just think it's interesting. Like, I think. Wait, hold on one second. The notes. I think we we kind of like threw Heedle down to AHL because we were scared of like the way that he played in preseason, and I think it's just like. Quinn just didn't see that drive in him, and I just, no. But to be, I mean, I mean he didn't look what, good. He didn't look good. That yeah, that's just straight facts. That's, it's, that's from what everybody facts. said. Absolutely, he didn't look good. But let's not forget, dude. It's preseason. You know, like you yeah. But at, get, the, at the same time, there were over. other people pushing for roster spots. True. It's not like he had a no, no, roster no, spot. True. You know, given no, like, you're right. You're right. Set but I think now through the first couple games, like I think he. You know, I pulled up his AHL stats. The guy's on a fucking rampage, dude. He already has eight points through the first six games. He's and, playing very well right oh now. Yeah, and AHL. another piece of good news: Hartford is actually winning so oh, far. Got Heedle. So, and but another thing too: I, I, new, new coaching staff. I didn't, I didn't write it down, but we had that whole little thing with uh, Kratsov, and apparently he has that thing in his contract that he can go back to. What was it? KHL? Yeah, if he wants to. If he wants to. But so. I don't think he's going to from based on f- what I've read. Yeah, I, I mean, when but I first saw the lineup, I really, I really truly thought that those two guys were going to be in the NHL lineup all year. But I don't know. I, I, feel, like, I feel like Quinn is like, he doesn't hate Hedl, obviously, but I think he's 
I think he sees like potential in him, so I think he goes a little harder on him personally. Two things. I'm actually glad you brought up the craft saw thing because remember hearing about the thing where he got scratched. If I read and understand understood correctly what I was reading, he got scratched the second game of the season after a horrible first game. But you got to keep in mind, you know, you just came over to America, new league, exactly. new culture, like and all that. Combo. So I don't think we really need to, you know, yeah. dive too far into that because I think it was honestly just like give him a day off, let him get his head back on straight, and then move on, see what he does from here on out. And to Heedle, did, wasn't he? Su- didn't he say or somebody said he was suffering from confidence issues? I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't have Twitter. Hold, so holding sure. the puck. I could have sworn I saw something. And like from that standpoint, I could. It made sense to send to send him to Hartford. You know, yeah. but it, get listen, some confidence back. Because play he's against actually men. Playing, he's playing very good get, though. Get so it's, I top think it's, line minutes. It's actually. I think if I think it's actually. Well, there's actually a lot of more positives than people think no, in this definitely. situation. I just think about him. Like, listen, at this point, like if the Rangers continue to lose, like if we lose tomorrow night, they gotta. They gotta. I mean, at least in my opinion, I think they should just bring him up. It's not like he's that much of a game changer in the way, but like you, you got to start figuring the, the offense and you got to start getting these lines established early in the season. You can't just be, you know, you can't be ten games into the season still jumbling the lines around. I think you got to get something established by then. I mean, you got to get at least two lines established and then mix and match a I winger just think, here. And I there think what it is, six. I think he's trying to find these like perfect combinations, and I think. Because he's not seeing the level of production, maybe, from these other guys that he wants to keep scrambling the lines around. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's commonplace, though, for, for coaches to do that. I just uh, re- Unless you're Mike Babcock. I just think it's common. <laughs> I, I just think it, it reminds me a little bit of AV. That's all. Kind of scares me a little bit. But What are your thoughts on Brendan Lemieux, just to be random? Because we have not mentioned his name once. Outside of you know a couple stupid penalties, he's well, he's another guy who's just kind of been there. Exactly. Although I will admit, in the third period against Vancouver, his line was going off at one yeah. point. That's a good point with with Lemieux, though. Actually, I think he actually has taken a lot of stupid penalties recently. Uh, that uh, that is the only comment I feel like I would say about him. Like if he he should definitely. And you actually you want to know who drew two penalties against? In the game against Vancouver, I was amazed when I heard it was the second drawn penalty because I missed the first one. Chris Kreider, he drew two penalties and didn't take two. I was impressed. I was very impressed. Listen, I I I love Kreider just because I love watching him skate because he's just unbelievable. But I mean that right there earned him the A for me. (laughs) The alternate captain for me. Yeah, I mean, with the exception, you know. The other games were just – it's it's easier for us to break down the last game that we saw because yeah. it's so much more fresh in our head. But uh, Yeah, and also we didn't have to deal with, you know, one game over – But but what it comes down to 14 is 14 days or whatever. Let's look at the most recent game. So we had a couple yeah, cool. line – you know, we had a couple line changes going on in the lineup, guys alternating in and out of the lineup, putting Shea in the, in the Quinn bin as a – Carpinello says, which I find fucking hilarious. But I mean, it's it's a great term. <laughs> it really is. But yeah, Shea was in the Quinn bin because he was playing consistent, and this it, it's just simple. The Rangers decided that they only wanted to play the third period of that game. Basically, there was one point in the second period, dude, where like I almost wanted to shut the game off because the Rangers were just getting absolutely worked on the Vancouver power play. Quinn Hughes must have had like seven shots, dude, on that power play. He was just taking absolute cannons. I was like, dude, it looks like nobody even like it was skating, bro. It was so bad. It was so bad. Like they. That's the one reason I will say that I love the Faust on the first line thing. And it's funny because when Jesper Faust passed that puck to Panarin, I texted in our group chat. I was like, new line with the eye emoji oh, God. as a joke. And what do you know? He actually is going to be a new line, so funny enough. You should be a fortune teller. I should. <laughs> Maybe a little luck. You know, every once in a while, you make enough predictions, you get one or two, right? But, no, nah, but I like that in that sense because I think, and Foss also had a lot to do with that first goal, chipping that puck in and really getting after it. Foss is just a pure grinder. He's just a beast. You can't you can't really say anything bad about Foss so far this season. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about him. Quickie, man. 
No, he's a beast. Yes, sir. I just I'll say two things and then we can wrap the episode up. The first thing I want to point out is when we were, you know, going through our list of thrashing Quinn's lineup decisions, the one thing that was sticking out to me is like, sure, you want to bench D'Angelo and you want to bench Shea, but you're not going to send a good lesson or a strong lesson if you're going to bench him for players who, one, are not playing as well and two, who are just, (laughs) who are honestly train wrecks while you're trying to teach that lesson. What are you trying to prove in that aspect? It, in my opinion, it's not a good, it's not a good look. Yeah. I mean, I get the message he's trying to send to Shea, like, you know, you got to really stop playing inconsistent because I think they consider him one of the leaders on D. I feel like with the money that they pay him, like, I feel like they consider him one of the more experienced guys. Well, he's, along with Stahl and obviously Truba. But well, I mean, I mean, Shea is the second longest tenured defenseman. Yeah. we have so so that in a way, yes, that makes sense. I mean, so far out of the defensive core, I mean, you can't say anything bad about Truba, though. No. Nah. And they got to learn from Truba and the Not fact really. that, dude, when you, it, it sounds like it's such a, like, a cliche, like, hockey thing to say, but I think the Rangers, like, they just need to simplify, like, two things, man. They just have to simplify that breakout. And it's funny because that's one of the things that Quinn, that Quinn actually emphasizes, you know, just clean breakouts and shit. And I just, like... I think maybe you think maybe that's part of the reason. Like, dude, they're so focused on like trying to make like those clean, crisp passes. Like, dude, just get the fucking puck out, bro. If that's your only option is to shoot that shit off the boards, get it out. That's what Truba does. I don't see like that's the number one thing that if they're gonna win tomorrow, they gotta fix that up, dude. They can't. They cannot turn that puck over in the defensive zone anymore. That's the number one thing if moving forward for the defense. Yeah, they no, got to stop. Yeah. That that's the number one thing so now, far. Breakouts have definitely been a problem. And the last thing I'll end on to f- close out episode number 20 of Backup Blue Shirts is the way we played in that third period against Vancouver, right now that's the bar. For that's the bar yeah. for a game for the rest yeah, of the season. You don't season have to fuck, and you don't have to fucking worry about defensive zone when you're in the offensive zone the whole the best period. Way to play defense is be in the offensive zone with controlling the shit out of the puck. But but even so, I think to add to what you're saying, I think and on the offensive end, stop with the fucking 88 passes before a shot. Put the goddamn puck on net. Just shoot the puck, dude. We have more guys that are we have this is the best like shooters I feel like we've had on the team, at least this couple three, Truba Zabanja and Panarin. I feel like that they've been those guys need to put the puck on net more, personally. Truba's been doing it, so I can't hate on him. Panarin has four goals, but especially on that power play, they have to shoot the puck, dude. Cycle it and shoot. That's it. Yep. Absolutely. And, and maybe if Quinn see, listens hey, to the podcast, the, maybe throw Panarin in the middle for a game. And if they score on it, you know, maybe I, bring uh, me in as a coach. But I don't know what to say to that, but... <laughs> uh, that's yeah, all but I there was that that desperation factor was definitely there in that third period. Oh, it was against a great Vancouver. third period, but you know you can't give up that, three goals. Th- that's in the first. how we need. That's how we need to play though yeah, with you, desperation. Yeah, I mean you can't. You got to play every period like that. You can't just be lackadaisical in the first two periods and then decide, hey, let's play the third period and see if we could win. That's not how it works. You have to play. They have to play a more complete game. So moving forward, we got Arizona tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, we actually have only... Arizona tomorrow, Buffalo and on Jimmy Thursday. Jimmy returns to the Garden, scores a goal, you think, or what? Yeah, because, of course, an <laughs> Axe Ranger scores a goal. Come on. What, no, kind, of a quite, what kind of a prediction think is Stepan's that? Stepan's going to score one tomorrow? Eh. I was kind of hoping that Hank was going to play, He's to be honest. Stepan is only going to score if he does the patented drop the shoulder and then snipe top left. The only way he's scoring. Unfortunately, Hank's not playing tomorrow. I kind of wish he was just to see Stepan get robbed by him. But it's Gorgiev, which I don't mind. I feel like Gorgiev needs, Gorgiev needs a bounce back game for sure. Yeah, that was a rough definitely. one against the Devils. Not that he played bad, but I think he needs to get. Not that his confidence is low either, but definitely I see I see a bounce back performance by 
by Gorgiev and the Rangers tomorrow. I'm going with the Rangers. They're going to take it. Yeah, and then Boston on Sunday and Tuesday, Tampa. Then we plan to record episode number 21. And we may or may not have a special guest. Not going to spoil it, but stay tuned. Follow us on Twitter at BackupBluePod, and we'll tell you just who that special guest might be if we can get him on. Uh, we also we are on YouTube and Podbean, Backup Blue Shirts, the podcast. If you guys want, please, I could use some money. You know, I'm uh, I'm trying to go to some Rangers games. Remember that GoFundMe page we talked about last year? You want to start that up? Nah, nah, I'm just kidding. Although, uh, if... Uh, well, our shades, bro, are you one and all this year at the gun? Or? Actually, no, I didn't even... I didn't oh, go to opening hey, night. Zero, I was, zero. Never mind. So I can't make a case I wanted to go to. I wanted to go to opening night so badly, but I was having fucking problems with my neck, and I didn't want to fuck any... I didn't want to fuck with anything, so... Yeah, way to, way to end the podcast on a bad note, Shades. Jesus. All right. And now that I'm done talking to myself, thank you, everyone, for listening. Back up Blue Pod on Twitter, YouTube, and Podbean. Back up Blue Shirts. I am your host... Mike Sparacino, a.k.a. Shades, alongside Brendan Mulroy, a.k.a. Mulgoon, a.k.a. The Big Goon, who got got his bathroom trip out of the way. Oh, yeah, go- I'm, not going- running, I'm not running out of the pod this time, baby. I'm we're go- if, we're I'm going for 21 time. next week. Blackjack, baby. Let's go. Let's go, Rangers. Give me that uh, ace and king, and then, you know, give me 50000 bucks. All right, thank you. Thank you.